Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. So, ever since Tom Lipton's original videos on making flat lapping plates, I've always wanted to give it a shot, but never really got around to it. But after seeing uh, Spencer Webb's recent activity in making his, sort of gave me the kick I needed to just get it done, and also some new ideas that I'd not previously seen before. So. Just wanted to show off uh, the plates we made, how we made them, and some of the results we got with them real quick. So the motivation behind these was not just we want lapping plates to make things flat, but also it was slightly related to the diamond turning lathe project. The x-axis rail, which basically determines the straightness of travel of the entire x-axis, so of course needs to be very good. That went through grinding and we got it pretty decent, but there's maybe a 40 millionth twist across the whole 12 inch length of it. And that's really tough to get out um, on our grinding setup. Even just a tiny amount of residual magnetism seems to pull the twist out when you set it on the mag chuck, even if the magnet's off, uh, and sort of pull the twist out so you can't really grind it out as easily. So we figured maybe we can lap them in. Um, and then I got back into the lapping plates and now here we are. So the design was slightly inspired by Spencer Webb's most recent plates in that they have the annular groove along the outside to help contain the slurry. Um, Robin, I think, was the origin, original source of that idea but told Spencer to do it for his plates. And then for the groove pattern, we actually have a uh, little triangular pattern instead of just squares. Idea being, you know, maybe the triangles can sort of wedge themselves through a hydrodynamic layer and break that up a bit better. Um, this is inspired by a, the lapping plates that uh, Philip made on Instagram. Um, steel full or whatever his username is. So we machined these uh, I just turned, I faced them off on the lathe, we threw them in the Haas, cut these grooves in there, and added the, the facial groove. And the plan was to go, we'll grind them as close as we can get, and then lap them in the rest of the way. But I started making these on Friday and didn't have access to the grinder by the time we had finished cutting the grooves. So I figured, you know, I'll throw some diamond on there, rub them together, just see if it, uh, see if they'll clean up. And uh, I've put about three hours of lapping into them so far, if that. Uh, not three hours of straight rubbing, but like total, total time. And they are, they're done. Uh, we'll demonstrate here in a moment, but just with five micron diamond uh, and that, that much lapping, they're, they're uh, pretty much as flat as I could ever hope for them to be. So made up a couple slurries of, of diamond paste here. Here's a seven micron, and diamonds are all separated at the bottom, but you know, you give them a shake and get them resuspended. We got two and a half, and then the, the five is what I use to, to, do, to do the plates right now. They held a charge decently well, but they're not super embedded uh, to the point where the test part I'll show in a minute is actually, was done with two and a half, even though the plates were roughed in with five and it's noticeably better than, uh, than the five microns. So that was uh, definitely a lot of rolling, tumbling, abrasion action going on. But anyways, let's take a look at how flat these are. You've got the spherometer uh, leveled on one, and this is how I was measuring them in process as I was lapping them to each other. Like Robin says, you don't need three plates uh, to make something flat, you just need two and a twist gauge or repeatometer or something uh, to compare the relative curvature between the two. So I would just measure which one was concave, can, concave and which one was convex and put one on the other until it got it in close. So it's zeroed here on this first one. And there's a little bit of hysteresis in the indicator here. So you can see as I pull it forward, it's right at zero. And if, as I push it backwards, it sort of goes down to negative 20 millionths. So to keep things consistent, we're gonna measure as I pull and it's preloaded towards us um, just to make sure we're not catching up 
any of that weird hysteresis in our measurement. So we'll call that zero there. Bring in our other plate. Now the tricky part is getting it so we are actually on the pads with all the feet. But there we go, and it's out of shot. There we have it. So I'll pull it towards us, and I would say we're not even at 10 millionths there. Yeah, okay, that's, well, let's not fall off. That's, that's about as close to zero as I could expect to get with these guys. So I've measured this at a couple of different angular orientations too, and they're consistent all the way around. Uh, the form that I was using to lap them in, I made sure uh, to really have no linear strokes of any kind, just so it would generate a nice uh, even sphere. And uh, according to this, that's, that's pretty darn good. Now I can't make blanket statements about the entire surface just because it's measuring a, a few points. Um, but optical flat testing has confirmed that this is probably correct. Uh, we only have a three inch optical flat that can span half of this, but the fringes uh, from that look correspond with, with this result, let's say. So now let's take a look at a part that we did uh, to see how well these work and the results we got on that. So here we are back at our ultra ghetto laser fizzo interferometer setup, which is basically just an optical flat but we're using a laser source of coherent light um, instead of coherent monochromatic light instead of a source of low coherence monochromatic light like a sodium lamp or a helium lamp or something like that. Um, but this is the part that we lapped here. So this is a tungsten carbide crowned roller. Uh, it looks kind of just like a cylinder, but here there's a little flat ground on it, and you can see it is in fact ground. Just just PI things, uh, but it was a it was a nice part with two two ends that we could lap, uh, and that's what we tried. So this uh, this first side here, this is the shiniest side. That's pretty darn close to a mirror there, um, and that this was not done on those lapping plates. This was done with some one micron lapping film uh, from McMaster, thin plastic based diamond lapping film. Put this on a surface plate and I lapped it on there for a while. And this looks nice, but this isn't, isn't actually very flat because you have a big compliant layer in between the part and the plate. This tends to rock and get the edges quite rounded off on it, uh, even with good form. It's, it's far more difficult to get things flat with a big squishy lapping plate. We'll put it like that. The other side here, this was done with two and a half micron diamond on the lapping plate with a little bit of uh, five micron contamination there. And that looks pretty decent. And as we'll see in a moment here, this actually ended up being a lot flatter. But let's set up the uh, interferometer and take a look. All right, so we're set up here. I think I've got the focus and exposure dialed in to where this will be remotely visible on the viewing screen. So you can see when I put our part underneath the laser here, we get a projection of the reflection back up on the viewing screen. And this is the good side that we lapped on the homemade laps. But first we'll look at the other side which we lapped on the diamond film on the surface plate and right off the bat something's up very f not crisp edges at all very fuzzy so indicating this is not just a nice planar mirror reflecting the light back up here but there is a lot of curvature to it leading to this weird defocus and blurriness around the edges so even though this is more reflective visibly to the eye the image that it produces as a mirror is not of a high quality, but let's bring in our flat now. We'll set it down on the part and right off the bat, we got big problems. That is uh, not what you want to see 
when you are lapping something for flatness because that is darn near a sphere uh, I mean it's it's no real uniform shape at all but that is a that is far from flat so diamond lap diamond lapping film on a surface plate maybe that's all right for uh, aesthetic finishes but and maybe my form is just bad which I'm sure is also true but uh, this is not my not my go-to for flatness so let's Take the flat off, and let's look at the other side. Immediately we see nice crisp edges. We'll set that flat down on there. And now, now we can see we're starting to get somewhere. Let's space those out a bit more if we can. So, yeah, this is uh, far from perfect, but uh, certainly respectable for a start. Um, as we can see, over the majority of the part, it is uh, pretty darn flat, but there is some rounding around the edges here. There is a bit of curvature to it. I would call that maybe a quarter to a third fringe though. Maybe a half if you were being mean uh, or being super judgmental. But uh, that's certainly, certainly respectable. So maybe 50 to 100 nanometers uh, flatness on this part. So a couple micro inches, I'll say. Um, this is a 405 nanometer source. So we'll divide that, divide that by two and multiply by our fringe count to get the flatness reading. Uh, but yeah, looks pretty pretty all right, at least for, for a start. Um, but what we can do here, which is kind of a unique uh, feature of this setup, is to an extent we can zoom in. So by changing the heights of the laser and the mirror, or the laser and the viewing screen, we can sort of take a closer look at a the fringes around the edge here. If we were to move the camera all the way back and the viewing screen all the way up, we can get super deep in on this thing. Uh, but here, this is allowing us to see a little bit better. Just on the edge here, you can see those fringes, it's pretty straight, but then boom, you got a nice curve where it's dropping off um, pretty much a full fringe uh, over, over this tiny little spatial distance uh, towards the edge there. So that they are rounded on just the very, the very edge of the part, it's rounded over, uh, but the majority of it seems decent, so. Hope you guys enjoyed that little uh, intermission from the Diamond Turning and Lathe project, just to show off a little side quest we did in a couple days, um, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and back to regularly scheduled content soon.